Visit us at Eduvo. Thank you for calling Eduvo. Every CSS property has a type of value it can accept, such as a predefined keyword, a URL, or a number. When assigning a numerical value to an element, we must specify a unit of measurement for that value. If we don't, the browser will not know what to do with that specific property. CSS offers a number of different units for expressing length. The units can either be relative or absolute. In this video, we'll begin with the absolute length unit. So let's get started. Absolute length units are fixed in relation to each other. They represent a physical measurement and are only useful when the physical properties of the output medium are known. So I've set up an HTML page containing several div elements with different class attributes. It's linked to a style sheet I created just to bootstrap our page and we'll be creating our new styles in a file named absolutelengthunits.css. For this example, we'll be using the six absolute length units to add a width to each of these div elements. As you can see, absolute units consist of the physical units centimeter, millimeter, inches, picas, point, and the pixel unit. First up, we'll cover centimeters, millimeters, and inches. These units are not common and not intended for web design because they're highly dependent on the output medium and they can vary greatly between the various mediums and resolutions. In our CSS, we'll create a rule for our div with the class CM, and we will specify a width in centimeters. Refresh the browser and notice how the width of the CM div increased about five centimeters. And if we change our value here, to 21.16 centimeters. When we refresh, you'll see that the width doubles in size. Next, we'll create a new rule that will select our div with the class mm. And we'll go ahead and specify a width in millimeters. When we refresh, notice how the widths we specified in millimeters is nearly equal to the centimeters div. So we'll do the same for the next div with a class of IN and we'll specify a width in inches. We'll refresh the page and again, we'll see the inch units we specified make the elements width equal to the previous two. By default, when printing, inches, millimeters, and centimeters are rendered as their physical unit. For other output media, the units are scaled differently in a medium and platform dependent way. Next up, picas and points are an absolute unit of measurement commonly used in print, and like centimeters, millimeters, and inches are not really intended for web or screen design. In our CSS, we'll create a new rule for the div class PC and we'll specify a width using picas, or PCs. So one PC is equal to 12 points, or one sixth of an inch. And when we refresh, as you can see, the value of 50 PC is equal to the units above. If we specify a font size using picas, so here we'll specify a font size of 2.4 PC, Notice how the font size nearly doubles in size. So next we'll specify a width using points. So we'll select our div with the .pt class. And we'll add a width property with a value of 600 points. In our browser, we'll see that 600 points is equal to the width of the previous units. One point is equal to 172nd of an inch. If we also define a font size in points, so here we'll give it a value of 28.4 pt. 
Notice how the font size of 28.4 points also doubled the text size. Finally, one of the most commonly used units is the pixel. A CSS pixel indicates one point on the virtual grid to which our designs align. They are a common unit of measurement for layout as they allow us to position elements precisely on a page. When we use a pixel for layout, the size will always remain the same and will not scale regardless of the browser window size or the user's resolution. So for our last div, we will define a width using the pixel unit. So we'll select our div with the class px, and we will add a width property with a value of 800 pixels. If our div is 800 pixels wide, it will always take up 800 pixels of the screen. When we refresh the browser, we see how all the widths we've defined so far are equal to 800 pixels, and the font sizes for pikas and points are equal to about 38 pixels. A pixel unit is equal to 196 of one inch and has always been the smallest unit in screen-based design because it's the smallest point a screen can physically display. But now that pixel densities are increasing across devices and display resolutions are varying widely, the definition of a pixel has also changed. Instead of every measurement being solely based on hardware or device pixels by relating their physical units to their physical measurements on a screen, Pixels can also anchor their measurements to an optically consistent reference unit called the reference pixel. The reference pixel is currently the standard for all pixel-based measurements. It defines the visual angle of one pixel on a device with a pixel density of 96 dpi. This new standard should add more stability across all platforms, so pixels will look consistent in all viewing situations, no matter the pixel density. To learn more about how the reference pixel works, visit the W3C at W3.org. Except for pixel units, designers tend to avoid absolute length units for on-screen display because the size of the elements displayed on the browser is affected by the size and resolution of the user's monitor. If you're creating a print style sheet for a web page where your final output is being printed and the size of the page is likely known, then some of these units like pikas, points, and inches would be the appropriate choice. In the next video, we'll learn about relative units we can use that are more suitable for on-screen design.